putting up with the delay. Um, technical problems as usual. So, the talk is about theming. Um, we need to start with looking at what we actually want to do theming before we the new step. Um, we have, as far as I can see, three main groups of people who are actually interested in themes in the step. Some of the people who just don't like the way next step the new step looks. That's a fairly vociferous group on their mailing lists. Others are the people who want to have the new step applications running on other systems blending in with the native look and feel. And some are the people who just want to be able to play around have different things that they can look at, different appearance. Um, so with theming, I wanted to meet all three of those groups desires. So I started off with looking at what the main basic design objectives should be. Ease of use. Firstly for the end users, the people who are actually going to use the applications and want them to look a particular way. Secondly, for the theme developers. If we're going to get lots of people developing themes for the new step, we have to make it easy for them. And third, for the software developers, you don't want it to be a huge overhead to make your software compatible with theme. Then, lower down on my objectives are the, the obvious things. <laughs> the things actually have to work, <laughs> you have to do the job, they have to be fast enough. Um, we have to be able to maintain all this theme in our code base. So, how do we make a theme easy for people to use? Well, we make it a standard, well-defined package, something that you can easily copy from place to place, you don't have any problems installing. We provide an easy way to select a theme, so that people can just play around, try all the different themes available. We make the theme update instant, so that you're running applications, just change on the fly. You don't have to stop and start applications when you change themes. And we need to provide a tool so that people can actually tweak those themes and play around with them. From the designer's point of view, um, you've got to have some easy way for them to build the themes, and that really has to be a GUI application. It's no sensible alternative nowadays. <laughs> Again, they need to instantly be able to see what the changes they're making to their theme do to the way their application appears. Most themes, hopefully, should need no coding. So it should be good for a designer who isn't a software developer, someone who's actually good at the artistic side of it and can put together a theme without having to write any additional code. Sometimes you do have to write additional code, though. When you do that, you need to support versioning because you want to make sure the correct version of your executable is loaded into the system. Um, and one of the ways we're looking at doing themes is by tiling images onto um, individual controls. So you build a theme out of individual pictures. Um, to do that, we need to have a nice simple mechanism to define those tiles. Um, I chose to use a single image and divide it up. So you design your button and decide which parts of it are going to go where. Um, for the developer, we have to keep the number of methods to a minimum to keep it simple. That's a lot harder than it sounds. Um, we need to put as much code into the GUI library to make it standard built in as possible so that the developer doesn't have to rewrite stuff if possible. And we organize things in a clean and simple way with related stuff grouped together. And we'll try and document it. <coughs> so, how did we actually decide to do it? Well, it's going to be a slow, incremental process of getting the theming working perfectly instead. We're just part way there at the moment, really. So we need to build the theme engine and the tool to design themes in parallel, so that as you develop one feature in the theme engine, you've got the tool to try it all out. 
we need to use as much of the existing theme and functionality as possible, and that's actually quite a lot of the new stuff. Um, we need to design it from the very beginning, instant switching between things, dynamic updates. And we chose to use the ideas from Chameleon. Uh, that's a theme engine produced by the Etwello project. Um, basically, their concept was tiling for everything. Define rectangles, define the images that fill those rectangles, and have various controls in the GUI um, draw themselves using those rectangles to tile their left top corner, bottom right corner, filling things in between. And we have to provide theme methods that a coder can actually override so that they can say, right, I don't like the way this is drawn by fault. I'm going to do it completely differently. OK, the existing theming stuff. Uh, you know, Step has pretty much always provided system images. Uh, that's things like the arrows in menu items, um, icons for file buttons for when you want to load from a file system, that kind of thing. So we can use, reuse that mechanism in the aim of the new theming API. What we do is we replace the named system images that are built into the system with versions from a particular theme, and when the theme is deactivated, we just revert to the originals. System colors, um, much the same as system images. The OpenStep API provided a color list, which is a list of named colors that the system will use. So it has a, something saying highlighted control code for a control that's been highlighted. And when a control draws itself, it looks up one of those colors by name. All we do, we replace that color list when our theme is activated so that new colors will be used throughout, and we restore the list when the theme is deactivated again. Um, we always deactivate the old theme before activating a new one, and that kind of avoids confusion. <laughs> System fonts. Um, again, the GNU Step API provides a whole list of standard fonts by name and standard font sizes by name, and uses those to decide how text is going to be displayed in the various different controls. Um, the user default system specifies which name maps onto which actual font and which real size. Um, we could have a theme change all that sort of stuff. I haven't done it yet. NS interface style. That's a mechanism that was introduced by OpenStep many years ago to control the style of the interface. They used it for changing the style of applications between NextStep and NextStep running on Microsoft Windows. And it's a, a simple mechanism where you tag several different style names for different behaviors. And when you set a particular interface style for a control, then that control will draw itself differently. And you've got hard-coded drawing mechanisms in there to, to do the different look and feel. Because it only lets you switch between well-defined styles that are already built into the low-level library, it's too limited for general thinking, but we can use it to switch between standard behaviors such as menus. Um, the next step menu is a vertical menu on the uh, that normally appears top left corner of the screen. Uh, MacOS menu appears all the way across the middle of the screen. And the Windows menu appears within a window. Uh, the user default system in OpenStep is a really major component in this. It allows you to define a database of lots of different information. And that includes the fonts, the colors, all that sort of stuff. But we can extend it to add more behaviors. Um, a default control, whether we have the applications draw the window decorations in the, the um, 
top bar of the window before we put the window, that kind of thing, or whether we let the window manager do it. Uh, we can actually use that to control all sorts of detailed individual behaviours if we decide we want them for a particular place. So, what's new in the new theming system? Well, we can set any colour to be used by a control individually rather than using the system colours list. So we've got more fine-grained control there. We can set the interface device style for the individual um, controls and parts of controls. Now that's always been possible via the default system, but using the default system is kind of inconvenient. Um, most users have trouble doing it. They don't know what defaults they can set. They don't know what the possible values that there are. So having the theming system do that simplifies it enormously. Um, setting tile images to be used for a control. Uh, and that, that's totally new and adopted from the chameleon theming system. Um, and of course, overriding the individual methods used to draw a control. So the control, instead of drawing itself by using low-level uh, mechanisms that are a standard part of the drawing model, will use specific methods as a part of the theming system instead. So, time images. Okay, I've already said it was from chameleon. A matrix of up to nine images. So, we can have, say, two rows of three images or two columns of three images, or even just four images, but up to nine. So that would define a rectangle with top left corner, top right corner, bottom left corner, bottom right corner. Then the image in the middle can be tiled repeatedly to fill however wide a control is. The image in the middle on the vertical axis would be tiled to fill up the border on a larger control. And the middle part, um, is either tiled repeatedly to fill a control, or scaled up to fill a control, or just omitted because this is something that you're going to um, draw in the middle part with something else and you're only using the tiles for the border. So that concept of a matrix of nine images really works very well to draw pretty much any standard simple control that's not made up of other parts. If something's made up of other parts, obviously, you have multiple sets of tile images for each of those sections. Ah, yes, we use a single image. I think I mentioned that. Um, the idea is that we actually let people design a single image and they can do that in any sort of drawing package and produce a nice looking image for what they want the thing to look like in the long run. Then they go into the theming application with that image and specify where that's sliced up into nine sections. So that makes it easier to design the nine parts of the tile. <coughs> right, end user theme selection. User defaults are too obscure. I mean, it's actually quite simple to set a theme using user defaults. You just set the user default to specify the theme name, but who wants to do command line stuff like that? <laughs> so what we did was we extended the info panel that all the new step applications use pretty much. There's a standard mechanism within the API for creating an info panel. So all we do is extend that standard mechanism so that it shows the current theme at the bottom of the list and all the other information about the uh, application. Clicking on the name of that theme brings up the theme panel, which gives you the icons of all the themes on the left and lets you select on an individual, so you click on an individual theme to select it. Um, once you've selected a theme, it displays the information about it, who the author was, when it was written, any, any other information that the author wanted to put in there. And also obviously changes the way your application looks. There's also a button on that panel that lets you make this selected theme be the default for your application.
thematic. That's the design application. Um, it should be usable to tweak things because we want it to be ni nice and simple for people who just want to mess around with their things. But mostly it's designed for the actual theme designer. Um, the person who's going to write a theme from scratch and is going to put new versions of various different controls in there and systematically change colours and that kind of thing. So it has to provide easy ways to replace the system images, to specify replacement color, uh, colors, to set the menu style, to set the decoration behavior, to set in all sorts of individual information. The GS theme class is a bit that's actually built into the GUI library and that the library uses for drawing. Um, the basic class is responsible for handling loading a new theme from a bundle, and that includes loading in new executable code uh, if you're overriding individual methods to draw things differently. It controls the switchover between themes, that process of deactivating one theme and activating another. It handles all the actual changes, the mechanism of introducing the new system colors and the new images and changing the user defaults. And it provides methods to obtain all the different resources that you use to draw your controls. And it's designed to be efficient. So it uses load on demand caching. Nothing in there, um, none, none of those big resources like the images are actually loaded into memory unless they're used. And they, at the moment they're used, they're cached. They stay in memory for the duration that the, that theme is active. And um, look up for them is just extremely quick. The activation process. Um, okay, we start off when we activate a theme by sending a notification to say that the theme is going to activate. And that allows anything else in your application to do any work it needs to do to handle that theme activation. So some of the GUI classes will observe that notification and will change the way they behave when they see a new theme being activated. Um, but also user code can handle that. And so if an application wants to be able to deal with theming in a more intelligent way, it can use the notifications to do that. Once we send that notification to say we're going to activate a new theme, we change the user default setting of system colors, system images. We change the current theme, uh, which is a, a global variable, essentially, so that everything can use this new theme instance, this new object. We update the main menu of the application, because that's a kind of complicated bit where we have to reorganize the menu if we're changing from a, a horizontal layout to a vertical layout, that kind of thing. And we send another notification telling everything that the activation has completed. And that's, that's the point when all the windows can redraw themselves to take on the new appearance. Theme deactivation is pretty much a reverse of that. We send a notification to say that we are stopping. Um, remove all the images, remove the current theme and revert to the original one, which might be, or will generally be the built-in one. And we can say the notification to say we've completed. Right. I put in a whole section on this because <coughs> it is an important detail that we don't override the default system when we introduce a new theme. Almost all of this standard theming mechanism all the old stuff certainly is controlled by the user default system. Um, we avoid overriding what anyone else has set there. So we set our new defaults in a, in a default domain that's at the bottom of the list that's looked at consulting last. Um, I don't know if everyone's familiar with the default system, but basically you have 
different domains that you set defaults in and you have a list of domains and when you want to look up the value of the default it goes down the list and finds the first match. So the matches produced by the themes are always the last matches and someone else can tweak things in, by setting individual defaults. I don't know if that's the right decision. That's the way it works at the moment. Okay, low level drawing stuff on themes. This is a whole new section of the GS theme class still. Um, we provide utilities to do things like tiling of a rectangle, drawing borders, drawing the central part, um, all the sort of basic drawing functionality that you need to use within your theme methods if you're going to be writing a theme and you're going to be overriding individual methods. This is the toolkit of things that you can use to do simpler drawing. You can always use the very low level API, the um, NSP to get path, that kind of stuff, but simpler. Right. The main API for the theming, if you're going to actually implement new controls in, in the theme system. Um, it's a, I'll start again. <laughs> um, we have a, a list of methods that are essentially designed for drawing specific controls. So for instance, the button has a few methods that allow it to draw itself using the theming API rather than using low level mechanisms. We override those in thematic.app. It lets you add new code to your theme that will override those methods. Um, and the controls call them to draw themselves. So these methods use the tiles, the interface styles, and the images that are provided by all the standard theming mechanism. And if none of those overrides that let you theme things. If the tiles aren't there, the colours aren't there, that sort of thing. It all just falls back on the original hard-coded GNU step style. Right. <coughs> Named items are a fairly important concept in the theme <coughs> system. It's, it's not enough to change the look of all controls in a particular class. Um, the reason for that is that a particular class of control is used in different contexts buttons, for instance, are used throughout the system, and you won't necessarily want the buttons to look the same everywhere that they're used. Um, so the OK button in your open panel, maybe all OK buttons want to look different from most other buttons. Um, the way we handle that is that the enclosing control, so the, op the open panel, for instance, when it creates a button in itself, it also can assign a name to that button. Basically, it registers that name with the current theme object. Um, that allows the theme designer to then provide resources specific for that individual button rather than all buttons. Right, current state of development. Okay. The framework exists, it's usable, you can create things um, with the application. The system images, system colors, interface style information, all that old stuff is there built into the theming system, uh, easily set up. The GUI library controls need to be con converted to use the um, drawing with methods from the theme API to use the named items and the named covers and the named tiles. Um, currently, NS button, NS scroller, NS scroll view are all switched over to using the theme API, but there's plenty of work still to be done on other controls. Um, I suppose NS menu really is controlled by the, the API as well. So the, uh, the look of the main menu we need volunteers. <laughs> In future we need, first of all, people to actually start using this um, to design, design some nice themes. Partly because 
we want to have some nice things. Partly because that can show any shortcomings. Um, we need to continue the process of looking at the individual con GUI controls that haven't really been themed yet and define the methods that we're going to use to draw those. These are the methods that are added to the current theming API. And we need to obviously update those controls to use those methods, update the thematic application to support those changes. Um, we should support setting system fonts. There's not been any call for it yet, but I'm sure at some point in the future people will want that. I think that's the end. Now, the obvious thing to do at this point is to try and demo thematic. Ah. Will that not be size screen again? Sorry. Oh, no, that's worked. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I had to borrow this. <laughs> I don't have an adapter for my computer, so the projector. Oh, that looks good. Okay, let's try. start the thematic application. Uh, okay. I can create a new theme. And what you see when you create the theme, first of all, is your, your main window for that theme editor. Up here we have system colors. That's quite straightforward. It's not the most. Oh. Anyway, the system colors inspector lets you select which system color you want to change, and then you can use a color well to pick a particular system color. So, so the control highlight color might have changed to, to yellow. Um, probably not a good one. <coughs> background colour. You've seen the instant effect of setting a red background colour for all the controls. Pretty ugly, but uh, it illustrates a point. <laughs> um, then we have the system images. That's an effect you get all the different standard images. So you can find the image you want to change that one and double click to get up a, an open panel to select the image if you actually have one on disk you want to replace it um, the menu inspector lets you for instance select between menu styles so now we have a horizontal menu bar at the top and we have a vertical menu bar again are there constraints for a, a horizontal menu? Constraints? In what sense? Well, what happens if there are more menu items than in the screen? I haven't the faintest idea, to be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've had that for quite a while, and I've not actually come across that in practice. We had a discussion about what we were going to do for um, in-window menus. Um, we've just recently added Microsoft style in window menus and of course windows are a lot shorter so it's actually a real problem in that case mm -hmm. uh, in, in that we're quite likely to have uh, menus where the number of items won't fit across the width of the window um, 
I think what we decided to do there is uh, have a sub menu produced at the right hand side if there were two if there was two little specs. So you click on that sub menu and then get a vertical menu for the extra items. But that's not yet implemented. Um, windows decorated natively or decorated by theme. Unfortunately, that's the one thing that doesn't yet work immediately on the fly. You have to exit from the application again. Uh, the reason for that is because the, the window decoration stuff is tied in with the back end as well as the front end GUI library. And we've had to change all the back ends as well as changing the GUI to implement that. So that's going to take a little time. Oops. Um, final one along here. That's miscellaneous stuff. <laughs> it's uh, where you set who's the author, any additional information you want on the thing, um, change the icon for the thing, that kind of thing. Uh, just a quick close that one. And open an existing one. Now, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks to Ricardo for this one. He didn't want me to show this. <laughs> no, <laughs> version. But it's, it's an old version of this Windows theme. And it, actually, I probably modified it a little, so he's not even responsible for all the mistakes. <laughs> um, the fact is, I didn't have anything, didn't have time to lock up anything myself. So. Um, Oh well. No, let's cancel that. So, <coughs> uh, it does have Okay, so here's a an example of a an image and setting the tiling for it. So if you watch the button on the main menu, as I change the position that I cut this image. So it has to be always symmetrical? Um, it does in this at the moment. The backend API doesn't require it to be symmetrical, but the, um, the thematic application does. Ah. That's Anyway, you can see the effect of changing these positions. Basically, we're drawing the border around the outside in this button using this image. Um, oh, we don't have that one yet. I can show some of that. Um, yeah, I should. Go back to so I realize I just went along the top here where you have system colors, system images, menu, window, and miscellaneous. The rest of this space. And the, so the rest of the space here, in the, this area, is for other GUI controls. The idea is that you go into GORM and edit thematic and just drop other controls in here. So at the moment we've got a button drop in here, a um, box, and a scroll view with a couple of scrolls. Now, if you click on one of those, the theme inspector comes up with a whole lot of different options. So first of all, there's tiling. You can uh, control, click on there, and you can select an image to use for tiling. Um, you can select, in the case of the scroller, different named items here. So the scroller down arrow is one of those named items that is specific to the scroll up. So select 
a down arrow and um, say select a different colour for the scroller down arrow. There you go. Only affects the scroller down arrow. I could also, for instance, set a different colour for the scroller horizontal log. So you can customise each individual control. You can set the tiles to draw it, you can set the colours. Um, you can set options if they have them. And this one does. I've forgotten about that. Well, that's good. Um, so we can have arrows at the same end of the scroll bar or opposite end of the scroll bar. Which are, <laughs> Which are, yes. Just a quick question. Yep. Um, are these colors always opaque or um, this opportunity to start with? They're not opaque. In fact, the Ricardo's one that we just looked at was not opaque. Okay. Um, so you can uh, have alpha where you store alpha. You can have alpha in the colors. Okay. Yeah. In the features too? You have an alpha channel in your features to have transparent uh, custom borders in your components? You could, yes. Um, now, of course, the final thing is <coughs> code. If you actually want different code, um, there are various things you can include in your code, the extras that you need. So, if you want to add common methods that are shared by different methods within your thing, or include extra non headers, for instance, we are going to be doing a Windows theme, which will want to use the Windows theming API, which means we're going to need to include their headers. Um, global variable declarations, additions to a make file to build it all. But there's one of your actual theme methods, <laughs> draw button, in view, with a particular style for a particular state. Um, so if you click on edit, for that, you get up a template method that just invokes the superclass implementation. Um, these template methods are all, well, in fact, all these settings in thematic are defined in property lists, text property lists in files in the thematic application. So most of adding a new control is very easy. You just change those text files. But anyway. Um, if, for instance, I want to put some more code in here, um, oops. <laughs> maybe I won't bother putting any code in here. <laughs> if, if I was to put code into here and click on done, <laughs> anyway. It would automatically compile that and put it into the theme. Um, I don't know, that would be kind of fun to do. Do you handle uh, only solid colors, or can you also handle some gradients and predefined uh, patterns? We don't have gradients and patterns in there. We have just, just colors and we have tile images so that you can. Any tile gradient images. should be implemented using an image uh, every time? Um, not necessarily. I know a gradient could be implemented using a tiled image or it could be implemented <coughs> using code. You just override the method to draw the gradient. At some point in the future, we might add gradients as an option controlled by um, yeah, the, the user defaults option but we haven't done that yet. I think that probably really about covers it. Questions? <laughs> Any more questions? What, what happens if you enter code, invalid code in the code editor, just out of interest? Then it will give you a compiled error. Um, <coughs> see if I can do that. Mouse is a bit sensitive. Click buttons are sensitive. So if I just enter some rubbish there, hopefully, yeah, you get that.
course you can delete <laughs> when you've made a mistake. That's kind of easy. Or get back in and see. Somebody try to uh, convert the comedian theme uh, to the new blue step theme? No. That's probably a good idea to do, but. I mean, it would be nice uh, to have that. Uh, we want to convert the comedian guys to do it off the new scheme. If they have to do that. Yes, I, I don't actually think there are very many comedian themes yet. Uh, at least two or three there, which is a lot yeah. more than we have in the way of proper themes. <laughs> I, I don't need one, I really like it. I prefer it all of those old stuff. Right. It's my first one. Right. Um, anything else? More questions? I have no idea what the time is. Will those um, themes be compatible for uh, with, with other theming engines what they use? Uh, somehow? Mm. Yeah. Nice. Okay, the, the way, the the way we're going to converter? make things compatible with other theming engines is to actually get in a right code based things. Okay. Most of this is designed on the assumption that what we have using the application is a theme designer, someone who's interested in the graphics and who's an artistic and knows nothing about coding quite likely. If we want to integrate with Windows, which we do, um, or um, well, KDE or something like that, then we're going to have to use their native theme engines. And the way we have to do that is to go into the code level um, to use their theme engines from within, from within our code. So we can use we can use do that in two ways. If it's reasonably possible, we can use their theme engine to draw into our um, views directly, so to directly draw the controls. Where that's not possible because their theme engine just doesn't work that way what we can do is use the theme engine to draw into a background window and then take the contents of that window as an image pixmap and use the tiling mechanism to draw that within our things, within our controls. It's a roundabout way that hopefully we don't ever have to use that, but, but it's a fallback option. So, so yes, the intention is to write some themes to look like other systems. You said you wanted to keep the developer API fairly simple, yeah. and the least methods possible. But at the, at the moment, and at the moment, you've only implemented a button and the scroll bars and things. Yes. How do you envisage keeping it simple as, as well as having the sort of control specific theming as well? Because you know you've got like I assume check boxes and radio buttons and. They all have their own combo boxes and stuff. They all have their own sort of unique methods. Well, no. I, hopefully most of them won't. Because actually most of those things are implemented pretty much as buttons and can be drawn very easily using the tiling mechanism. So the vast majority of cases, what we already have will do the job for them. Um, what we have to look at are the more complex controls, like where you want to hold panel that contains you know, a browser and various buttons and things to behave differently. Um, one possibility because of the nature of Objective-C is that we never provide theming for the very, very big complex controls directly. All we do is say you add um, a me mechanism to replace a class, the control class that draws, that draws itself, with a subclass that's completely different. In the um, so we could add a simple API just to effectively replace the class with another version um, for those controls. So that should keep it 
let's just keep the uh, can down. We've got generic stuff that should work very well, simple for all the simple controllers. Then we've got a simple mechanism for people to override very complex controls that really need to be done completely differently. And what we really aim to do is keep down the count of methods handling those controls that are, on the mid are in the middle there that don't really fit into either of those two extreme camps, as it were. Um, so, so your your checkboxes and radio buttons will have they'll use the draw button method to draw themselves, yes. but they'll have a different image in there. Or, or a different um, right, which will be selected somehow with an extra parameter or? Well, well, they already use system images, for instance. The checkbox oh. uses a... Uh, oh, so they have named images? They have named images already. <coughs> and you just pick, pick the image, replace it in your thing. Before and the checkbox changes its behavior. Before named images, can I change the theme and replace the button with this the mother class? Almost every part of the using it is changed because so many items are buttons yeah. that everything got a window button. So that's the point where name image or accessory. Yeah. Okay. I think I call the whole thing. We can get ready for next. Is that? Yeah. Oh.